So this will be a quick video on uh, what's known as version control and the specific type of version control we're using is get uh, GIT and so uh, if any of you ever do any sort of programming ever again you maybe maybe you don't have plans for it uh, but you'll you'll probably uh, see version control again and there's just kind of some advantages and um, you can tell uh, you can tell exactly who did what and when and that's just really so um if somebody makes a uh somebody changes a piece of code and they break something it's not really to blame them it's not so they get in trouble it's just so you can figure out what what exactly broke and and who broke it and what they were trying to accomplish when they broke. So you can kind of sit down and meet and say, what what was going on? What were you trying to do? It's not really to get people in trouble. It's not that that kind of tell uh, that kind of administrative uh, telling of who did what. Um, there's uh, more importantly, um, you can go back to any point in time. So this is this is really the, the most important part of it. You can you can go back to any point in time. So say I make five or six code changes and somebody else makes some changes and somebody else makes some changes and then it turns out, oh okay, we're we're not gonna pr 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 uh, proceed with that feature in this version. We're not gonna pursue that. Um, let's we need to go back to a point in time. And then there's all kinds of other things to manage that. So uh, um, that's just the general overview of what version control is and why we want it. Uh, the specific service that we're going to use for this is just called Bitbucket. So I have Bitbucket open here and um, just a little bit bigger. Uh, so I sent you invites and so uh, just take your invites and sign up with an account. It, they, sh they should be to your IRSC account. Uh, so you'll only see one team. I have uh, both teams, the events and healthcare management, which is another another project, another capstone. So I click events and then you can see all kinds of, uh, you can see these are known as commits. So every time a source control or a source code is changed and uh, we actually want to, to check on it, uh, we can click any of this and see, see exactly what happened. So here I uploaded images, uh, emerged some of the some of the stuff from the from the template pages and then we can actually see what was done. So let's, I think we can view the activity, the very specific activity. You can see that, okay, this was exactly what was done. If I wanted to view um, Site Master, so say I wanted to, and you can see this is, it's smart enough to know how to go through and, and the stuff in the red is the old and then the stuff in the green is the new. So that's all, uh, and you probably won't even touch that. We'll probably just use it to to go back to a specific time in history if, if something uh, messes up. And it's, uh, and, and I guess there's also the added benefit that you can, um, it's kind of a central storage location that's kind of easy to access. So uh, what you're going to be doing initially is you're going to do a clone. So you click clone, get this address right here. This is what, what's important. So this from this HTTPS all the way down to this, Get right here, and then I'm going to hop into Visual Studio, uh, and then so I have Visual Studio open, and I'm going to make sure I'm in the uh, in the Team Explorer view. So Microsoft has its own source control management and uh, revision control product. And it's called Team Foundation. We're not going to use that because it's, it's one of their commercial project products, and it's uh, it's going to require its own separate server to set up. So it's just it's just typically easier to use a, a service like Bitbucket. Or uh, GitHub, or any in any of the other ones out there. There's a bunch of them. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, so normally we're in the, the Solution Explorer, but we want to be in the Team Explorer. And what we want what we want to do is clone. So I click clone, and this is the place it's going to put it. That's fine for now. I don't really I don't really care too much. So I put in that URL. I just paste. So you can see it's just a URL. It's HTTPS, so it's secure. It's my uh, username, so my my Bitbucket username is cbakley underscore irsc, and then uh, don't worry about this isn't an email address or anything. It's just saying this is the the domain. Um, 
and then this is kind of the uh, um, and this is actually I should mention this real quick even if you're not going into programming you're going to IT you'll see this a lot you'll see username at domain and then and then some slashes uh, and and this is the directory and this is the specific git file that has all the information so don't worry about that too much just uh, I'm just going to click clone and then it's going to basically bring everything in as a as a project okay so what happened if I click solution explorer I don't see anything yet right I have to actually open it up now so it's been cloned I can just go ahead and double click and then I want to open up the events.sln so click that you may have to double click And all of a sudden, we see it in the Solution Explorer. So I've merged the uh, the Site Master. Um, I didn't get it, and and the um, and this one right here, the events. I didn't get a chance to do the uh, to do the calendar yet, um, but I'll, I'll merge that soon, um, and that'll probably be its own separate page. But I'll, I'll show you how, essentially how this works. So say this, there's a page in here that's just called About. And I wanted to change this. I'm just going to change it to say like events or something like that and then I save it. So you can see there's a little red a red checkbox there and it says okay we've changed it we've changed this um, and done something to it. So what we can do is there's two ways uh, we can either commit and, and I know you can't see that so let me see if I can scooch this over just a little I'll close that. Okay, so we can right click and then specifically commit this file. Or if you've changed like five or six files, you just go right up here and then you uh, you can, under source control, we can do a commit. And, and I know you can't see that, but one of the menus that popped out was commit. But let's just commit the individual file first. Let's, let's do that. So I right click. And then I go to commit. And then the type of commit I want to do is, uh, so we go to actions. And so what I'm going to do is, um, we're going to have all these. So what I'm going to do, oh, that's right. So we have to add, uh, one of the things that, that's kind of typical that you want to do is you want to put a little message here. So I just write changed about page to have the events name. And it's just a little a little nice thing. That way when you've had 30 or 40 or 100 commits in between, you say, okay, I want to figure out which one caused the problem or that we need to revert back to. This was our kind of our good point, point in time. And we look at this label and we say, okay, uh, the events page broke and this is, this is the last time the events page has been touched. So let's go back to this point. So I'm going to click the drop down. Um, so it can, Git is kind of funny. It has a bunch of different... Um, a bunch of different modes. We're, we're, we're going to do is we're going to do the commit and push. So commit actually commits the file, and, and we can go into what that means. It's not really that important. Uh, um, but commit and push will actually push it out to the server. So we really want to do both. If we were to just commit, it's it's like only doing half the process. It's not actually going anywhere. It's just marked for commit on your computer. Um, it's when we do the commit and push that we that we actually send it to the Bitbucket server. So I'm going to click that. So successfully pushed. And then what we typically also want to do is resync. So if anybody else made changes in between, we can click sync and then it syncs it up. And now any anytime somebody opens their Visual Studio, the first thing they'll probably do is click sync and then they'll get all my changes. So we didn't have to email changes back and forth. We didn't have to put on a shared drive, nothing. It's just automatically there. They open up their Visual Studio and uh, they just click sync under Team Explorer and then boom, they, they have all the changes. And then what we can also do is we can go back to the Bitbucket website and we can say, okay, let's view all the commits. Uh, well, we can see I just made a commit and then here's our message, changed about page to have events name. And then we can actually view here. And you can see right here the red stuff. This is the old thing. It's in your application description page test. And then uh, the new thing is it says events. 
So hopefully that makes sense. It's not too tough to set up. Uh, you can't convert your old project. So any 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 of you that had uh, your previous project as a uh, that you set up, uh, you'll just leave that alone. You're you're gonna uh, import the new project from from the um, from that process that I showed at the beginning of the video.